this book belongs to? Me. Hello, journal. Is it okay if I call you that? It's a bit formal, I know. But we've only just met. Let me introduce myself. I'm Isabel Barbara Cook. Most people call me Izzy, not Dad. He calls me Titch. He's such a numpty head. My little brother Ben calls me Isbo. I call him he who chews curtains. He likes red for breakfast and blue for dinner. And then there's Mom, my top tea drinking buddy. Ah! I go get my tea and this is Pinky. I think she's jealous of you, Journal. made a wish. Since I was little, I've always dreamed of becoming a writer. This is where you come in, journal. got anything just by wanting it. I guess that birthday wish was a waste then. said writing is about exploring your thoughts. It helps you unlock your feelings. I'd like to write something that will make Gran smile. She always talks about little acorns growing into big trees. Is that to make me feel better about my height?
or about my writing. I want to write a story, but what kind? A romance? Science fiction? A comedy? A drama? Fairy tales? Wait, we're getting somewhere. A fantasy story. My fantasy story. Once upon a time. Ugh. No one said this would be easy. Again. From the top. Not so far away. In the land of. Astoria. A place of peace and magic. There lived a girl named... Grace! Everyone knew her by the bright color. Of her green dress. She was ready to begin her adventure. In fact, she'd been preparing for it her whole life, for she was the only apprentice of the village guardian, Elder Ava. Everyone was very fond of Grace. Her heart was full of curiosity and compassion. The villagers agreed that no one was... as kind as her. Too far away in the land of Astoria. There lived a young girl named Grace. She was kind and loved taking care of the world around her. Suddenly, a faint speck of light floated down and began to buzz around Grace. Hello, little Firefly. Did you come for my birthday? Oh, Elder Ava's gonna be so happy! Let's head back to the village. The Firefly shared Grace's excitement. I was also planning to make Elder Ava a fruit punch in secret. Maybe we can find some more berries on the way back, Firefly. That's a juicy one. Good job, Firefly. Will be perfect. Come on, Firefly. The village is just a bit further down. Whoa! I love doing that. The bridge was an old, creaky affair. 
Careful, Grace. Careful? Grace imagined shark fins circling below. Phew! We made it, Firefly. And... Grace knew many secret paths back to the village. Like this one. She loved feeling the roots around her, as if the tree was giving her a gentle hug. Nearly there, Firefly. Just one more little slide. Here we... The old cargo lift, barely used. Her own secret entrance to the village above. Grace couldn't wait to give Elder Ava a hug. She'd be so proud that her firefly came. Look, firefly. Happy birthday, Grace. I've made a new friend. One of our sacred fireflies. This is a very special thing indeed. Does this mean... Yes, it is time. Would you fetch me that box, please? Ava was sure that Grace would rise to the occasion. Go ahead, open it. This will store all the magic words you find. Some will stay with you, others are fleeting. They will help you overcome any obstacle. Now, your training is complete. Congratulations, new Guardian of the Fireflies. Guardian? But that's you. Guardian in retirement now. You should head to the Shrine Tree for the other Fireflies' blessing. I'll join you shortly, dear. Oh, before I forget, a little something of mine to mark the occasion. Elder Ava reached inside her pocket and handed Grace a gift. Ava's favorite pendant. So emerald! Now off you go. I'm so proud of you, Grace. Wait to try out my magic book. And all at once, Grace was surrounded by the hustle and bustle of village life.
Guardian. That was amazing. The best thing I've seen all morning. Why do we have to be on Grace the Grace loved throwing the stones oh, over the rooftops, at it. but not today. Look, Grace has the book. Today, the firefly oh, shrine was miss. waiting. Go on. She looked over her bustling treetop village. I heard you had a bit of leaf mold. This was all she knew. Yeah, Elder Bassus gave me a poultice. Did it work? Cleared it right And up. it was home. Looks better than ever. Smell that. That's the scent of paradise. I can always use more paradise. I'll take it in. But inside, she was still curious. Hey, Grace. Happy birthday. No, you can't have a magic book. Good to see you, Grace. But Grace has one. But well, that's different. She's special. But you say I'm special. Careful, careful. No need to rush. About the world that lay beyond. All oh, this thing's always breaking down. I bet kids have been sticking berries in the mechanisms again. Oh, we can't carry this by hand. Then you better get working. Oh, thanks. swayed in the warm breeze, its slats creaked with a gentle familiarity as Grace crossed it. Seen that book for a while, Grace. You off to see the fireflies. Let me get the key. Ah, blast! Damn pulleys! Grace couldn't wait to see the fireflies. Soon they bless her as new village guardian. What's being guardian going to be like, Firefly? I hope it's adventurous. Let's swing into adventure.
Grace crawled through the dank, dark tunnel. It didn't feel like being hugged at all. bell to announce her arrival. At last, the tree was in sight, home to the fireflies, whose ancient energy kept the village safe from harm. Go on. Show them what you can do. That's it! They're accepting their new guardian. At last, I can get a lion. Glowing light surrounded her. A timeless energy. The birth stars. And forged suns. Now she was part of it. And so Grace became the new Firefly Guardian, but her biggest adventure was yet to come. Hello, Journal. This time of the year, it gets dark so early. Like the day is just an accident, and the night is how the world really works. Stars and fireflies glowing in the dark. I've never actually seen a firefly. Do you think that matters, Journal? Glowing things are cool, especially in nature. On holiday in Wales, Gran and I would go to the beach and look up at the stars. But one night, we looked down instead. The stars were shining in the water. It was like the sky got flipped upside down. We took off our shoes and socks and waded into the water. As we walked over the pebbles, beneath our toes. Gran said it was called bioluminescence. Tiny plankton in the water being moved back and forth by the tide. I knew it was just little creatures, but it felt like magic.
I got up very early the next morning. I sneaked into the kitchen, got a jam jar, and went down to the shore to where I'd seen the plankton. evening, I was so excited, I carefully put the jar on my bedside table and waited for the night. But it didn't glow. I was devastated. I showed Gran the jar. She laughed. Gran always says. You can't put a cork in nature. They need sunlight and nutrients from the tide. Gran knows about those things. She used to be a marine biologist. Gran bought some special algae that would grow at home. We spent the whole day planning it. Pebbles. Corals. Sand. Glass stones. Water. Company. Lights. A house. We took pictures for Gran's photo album for our future selves to remember. The tank took ages to fill. How we took turns stirring the algae in. How happy we were when we had it all set. Just needs time to develop, said Fran. After six days, the algae was ready. I put the tank on my desk and ran my finger through the water. My own bit of magic. That was mum. She just got a call. She has to leave now. It sounded really bad. I have a weird feeling in my stomach.
something I don't know how to deal with. We just heard that Gran has had a stroke. I don't want to believe it. I can't lose her. Grace woke from a hazy, distant dream. Something unnatural had stirred her from slumber. What's that noise? Elder Ava? Grace! A giant creature is attacking our village. Attacking? There must be something wrong. Get to the tree at once. Hurry! What creature could have caused this? And suddenly, Grace was surrounded by smoke and cinders. As she hurried past the crackling rooftops, her concern grew. Hey, Grace! Gotta hide. You can hide with us. Broken. The lift. No, there's no space. Uh, okay, find your own hiding spot then. She looked at her burning treetop village. This was all she knew. This was home. She needed to get to the fireflies. She needed to keep everyone safe. Please, Grace, help me out. I'm trapped under this thing. Glad to see my feet again. No, no, no. I need to get to the firefly tree. The bridge was beyond repair. Okay. One step at a time. from beyond the village gate. Grace rushed out to meet it. Soon she would prove herself as the new village guardian. I can do this. Right, Firefly? Right? But she could not deny the creeping terror. The earth yawned below her. Phew. Made it. That was scary. This tree did not comfort her. It was as scared as she was. With nobody around to extinguish them, fires burned out of control. Crackled ahead. Is that a fire? 
I've never seen a plane like that before. The sacred bell lay silent on the ground. Dreadful realization dawned on Grace. Fireflies were gone. A new determination rose in her. She would fly. The fireflies. Elder Ava! Something took the fireflies. I know. Our people will fall sick without them. Don't give up hope. I'll get the fireflies back. I'll make everyone better. Go, and may the love of this village guide you, always. Grace took a deep breath. She knew what she had to do. She was the guardian. She would bring the fireflies back home. The earth could fall away beneath her. But she would not be stopped. This was further than she'd ever been before. And yet it was exhilarating, wondrous, and terrifying. Fear was at her side, and hope in her heart. But things were about to get worse. Much, much worse. Is Grace would not slow down. Not for crumbling paths. No one will want to read that ending. Not for giant monsters. She would make it answer to her. No matter what. She would catch the dragon. No, wait! She raced forward. And let. Hello, Journal. We went to see Gran today. In the hospital. It looked like... a big grey fortress. 
It took us a while to find the right room. Dad, let me open the door. bed at home. Nothing like the hospital one she was in. Lying in there, she looked so small. I don't remember her being that small. Gran's eyes were open, but she struggled to... ...find the right words. She just couldn't... Properly. The doctor said it was called dysphasia. It was caused by the stroke. She's usually so talkative, but now she kept stopping. Mid sentence, as if all the words she could find were just. Out of reach, I could see it really frustrating her. And then Gran started coughing. They put an oxygen mask on her. I told her she looked like Darth Gran. She smiled at that. That reminds me of... Gran telling me how she took Mum to the cinema... A long... Long time ago, when Mum was my age. A Gran story! Gran and Mum went to see my favourite movie. Mum fell asleep. But Gran fell in love with it. When I was little, Gran would show it to me. On a battered video cassette, Gran would laugh at the robots and guess a funny smile. Whenever the scruffy looking smuggler showed up, we'd watch it until we could quote all the best lines. We laughed a lot. Once she gets out, we're gonna watch them all over again. And when the next movie arrives, Gran and I are going to go to the cinema. Together. And soon, Gran and I will be playing games again. I can't wait! This time, I'll beat all her high scores. For sure. Gran's a tough cookie. In video games. And everywhere else. I heard mum crying in her room.
I've never seen her cry before. She looked so sad. I didn't know what to do. So I made her a cup of tea. Just like grands, she said. Mum said Gran was getting tired. I said she's getting better. Mum said she felt helpless. I said she was just sleepy. Mum said Gran's going to... I said she's going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. All you need is a leap of faith. Will Gran still be Gran after this? Of course. She'll be fine. Fine! Gran is going to get better, right? I made her smile. That should help. Got to keep positive. Mum needs me to. I'll show Gran my story. Mum as well. They'll enjoy reading it. I hope it helps. What else can I do? I just need to finish my story. So, where were we? After the dragon attacked the village, Grace set out to find the fireflies, leaving Elder Ava and her village behind. Her journey took her to a vast desert with a guardian. Who guards it because it is... Sacred. Grace had pursued the dragon far, far from home. The desert spread out before her. Dunes rising and falling like a sea of gold. Timeless and bewildering. A glow in the sand. Another firefly escaped from the dragon's grasp.
There was something very unnatural about it. Grace's will would not break that easily. think he is. Look, whoever you are... Go away! I can't! I have to find the... Go away! Okay. See ya. Mr. Grumpy Pants out. The yawning cave burrowed deep into the earth. Home to wondrous life. Easily scared. Covering the unknown, far below the rolling dunes, I wonder what used to be down here? Maybe sand-swimming desert pirates? Or one-eyed troglodytes? I hope not.
Interesting. Deep under the desert sands, Grace found... A long, forgotten chamber. Greatness past. The silence of the ages filled the air. Foul-tempered voice drifted down to grace. It didn't listen. I need to find it. Sacred, I said. No one listens to me anymore. Ah, you. You shall go no further. Oh, please shut up. Ha! 
What magic? Grace had disarmed the djinn. His fury was great. Fortunately, his voice was very, very smooth. <laughs> but the Desert Guardian would not let it rest. Hey! Stop it! Find the dragon. Don't you get that? I... That's it. So long. <laughs> Woo well, he got rid of sulky boots again. Now. What's all this? As she looked around this lonely, desolate place, Grace wondered, why would anyone choose to live here? There had been people here, once upon a time. What happened to them? Who were they? Maybe I'll find answers here. The dome was empty, but for a pool of water. An inviting grace of thoughts drifted to the people that once had lived here. She was sure they must have... Warriors! A distant roar roused Grace from her thoughts. Ancient statues toppled before Grace. Proud warriors. Protectors of their land. Grace, a grumpy mumbling could be heard. 
Ugh. Him again. Let's move. <laughs> That's better. I do the magic around here. You go away. The Desert Guardian was frantically looking for Grace. Stop hiding from me. He would surely find her eventually. Wouldn't he? Easy. I know you're there. I want you gone. You hear me? Ah! you so worked up, old windbag? The past? The past? It stays hidden. It must. Oh, the old days. So little left. Best forgotten. Look. Whatever it is you don't want me to see, I'm sure we can... No, 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 no! You cannot go further! Back! How can I get him to listen? Would she break the Jin statue? Or repair it?
I was once worshipped here. It was wonderful. But I grew complacent, arrogant. They warned me that great dangers were coming. And what did you do? Nothing. I believed that there was no danger I could not thwart. I was wrong. Hey, take the price. My being here must have brought back painful memories. That is as it should be. To feel something, even pain, after all this time. For that, I thank you. I don't need your thanks, but I do need to know if you've seen a dragon around here. It has come and gone. But there is something you should know about that beast. What was that? Hold on! Fall softly, my friend. Knowledge will be yours in time. Use it more wisely than I did. Hello, Jano. Today at school, I got my history essay back. I wrote about Vikings. I love Vikings. Mr. Collins didn't like it. I won't be showing this to Mum. Vikings are the best. They're tall and strong. They love conquering and fire. Vikings are basically all kinds of awesome. I could really use some awesome right now. I got her old photo album out. I wanted to see Gran like I remember her when she was awesome. visiting the hospital later today. When we arrived, Gran was asleep. Her skin looked so thin, almost see-through, like tissue paper. She was Gran-shaped, but empty. I mean, that's silly, right, Journal? It's just Gran, but somehow it isn't. It's not her! She woke up after a few minutes, but it didn't seem like she knew who we were. Why? Why is this happening? Why her? It isn't fair! Why, Journal? Gran still can't speak properly. It's so cruel. She can't tell us anything. Like what she wants to eat. Or how she feels. And what's worse, everyone pretends they're having a real conversation with her. But they're not! You're doing fine, Barbara, the doctor said to her. You just need some time. Hospitals should make you better.
She's so ill now. I want her better now. Just wait. Time is a healer. I thought that was his job. I wish I could help her. It makes me so mad! The nurse said it was dinner. Mum had ordered Gran. Soup and a jacket potato. But when Gran tried to eat by herself, she kept dropping her cutlery. Then I noticed Mum had ordered her mushroom soup. Mushroom! Gran calls them nature's bogeys. Mushrooms. She got that look and banged the spoon against the bowl. There was lip passing. But looking at Gran, I had to help her. I still had some loose change. So I ran down to the entrance hall where I'd seen a vending machine on the way in. Hurrying back to 305, I couldn't help but grin. They didn't let me back in. Adult talk. Wait outside. That's what they said. So I waited on a bench until Mum came out the room. She said nothing. Just took me to the car. We didn't speak a single word. Not at the car park, not during our drive home. Dad had made pies for tea. I just wasn't hungry. Dad said I needed to eat. I said if Gran wasn't going to eat, I slammed the door really loudly and flumped onto my bed. I still had the egg sandwich. It was all mushed up. Everything is all mushed up. Dad is mean. Mum doesn't care. And Pi is stupid. Maybe I should just try to write my story. Let's see. Last time, Grace was plunging down into the dark below. But the gin spell slowed her fall. Down and down she went, tumbling, helpless. Then and there, Grace started to... But the darkness didn't care.
As Grace hurtled through the darkness, her helplessness no longer made her feel scared. It made her feel frustrated, angry. She wanted answers. Jin's magic gently released her into the unknown. Why can no one answer a straightforward question? Now where am I? The ground was warm to the touch. At least it's quiet down there. Just my luck. And what's that? Molten stone. She'd seen nothing like this in her forest home. I really miss the folks at the village. hung above, looking decidedly precarious. Closer. Grace realized she would soon face its maker.
to read that ending. The lava gently bubbled, as if to mock her lack of progress.
us again. The whole floor's going to... Give way! Ah! Right. Not listening or ignoring. I don't care. I have to stop her. Inside Grace was a white hot rage. I can't end the story here. Exit. Grace didn't quite know what she'd encountered. Sheesh. She's so angry. The thought stuck with Grace. What's wrong with her, I wonder? Oh, I think I need a breather. A place to rest. Grace was beginning to feel the burn of loneliness. <sighs> Grace's thoughts drifted back to the burning giantess. Why would she be so full of rage? She must have felt... alone. Imagine being stuck in a cave... all by yourself. I go bonkers too. Grace vowed to be more understanding. If they met again. As the light pushed back the darkness, a heaviness lifted from her heart. That was strangely satisfying.
but I don't care. Grace was adrift on the current. Without control. Lost on the flow of lava. It would take her where it wished. Burning river went faster. And faster. Grace, remember, empathy. You! You again! She isn't listening! Run, Grace! Run! Thundering steps shook the earth. Now 
look what you've done. You look! We're trapped and it's all your fault. I hate this place and I hate you! I hate you! Her anger <laughs> consumed itself. you no no don't feel so angry now angry i know what that's like to feel angry as her anger left it brought a change Did it again. Lump's anger gone. Lump? Nice to meet you. I'm Grace. Sorry I was so angry. Lump sorry too. Lump scares Lump when Lump's so big. What? Dragon? I'll show you. But first, we need to get out of here. Hmm. Hmm. Just then, Grace noticed a boom shroom she hadn't seen before. Hello, Journal. Today, Sarah at school told me her granddad had a stroke too. His mouth went lopsided and he spoke a little funny. Now he mostly sits around watching the telly. I don't think Gran would enjoy that. She'd feel like she was giving up. She'd want to keep moving. Keep doing things. Gran always says. Give the world your kindness, and it will return it threefold. The more positive energy and kindness you give the world, the more you get back. When Mr. Parry's lawn got too high, Gran cut it for him. For the community centre meals, she baked cakes. She even does the unthinkable. 
She changed Ben's smelly nappies. We could do with kindness right now. Someone better step up. Me! Starting with... Bringing world peace? Cooking for the elderly? Cutting Mr. Parry's lawn? Tidying my room? Bringing order to chaos. A mighty struggle needs a suitable tagline. It's tidying time. And then I did the washing up from breakfast. bowed at my feet. He's such a complete numpty head. But it made mum laugh. And when we got to the hospital later, Gran was sitting in a chair and looking out the window. She was smiling. So all the things I've been doing have been working. I just have to do more. There was kale for tea, which is a kind of vegetable torture. But I told myself... that if I could eat all of it, then Gran would be even better tomorrow. on fire today. I ran up the stairs two at a time just to top things up. Pinky was very impressed and slept on my feet all night. Hello again, journal. I couldn't sleep. I guess I felt a bit silly. I mean, who cares if I eat my kale? Well, Dad, maybe? But does any of this really make a difference? It's just, if there's a sliver of a chance, it actually does. I want to believe in it. Sarah told me that 
When her granddad was sick, she used to pray. I don't exactly know how that works, but best to hedge my bets. Please. 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 Make Gran well. Sarah's family are pretty religious. Not like mum and dad. I don't know that much about religion, actually. I like the stories. Especially the one about the Ark and rescuing all the animals. Gran was raised Catholic, but I never really heard her talk about God, apart from that time she dropped the yogurts in Tesco's. We took care of the mess before the staff noticed. Gran even offered to pay for them. I asked her once. She said, if there is a god, they're in our actions. How we help and love one another. Seems right to me. So what should I do? I'm going to bring in my story next time we go to the hospital. I can read it to her. I think she'd like that. Maybe if I do a really good job, she can come home in time for Ben's birthday. But first, I need to get on with the story. Having escaped the flaming caves, Lump and Grace ventured into... a tenebrous forest. Writing Lump is going to be fun. But if she's not so angry anymore, she might need another character for. Maybe... uncontrollable cravings for... Sweet Fruit! Gentle sunlight streamed across their faces. Sun! I missed you. Oh, sky fire is warm. Like love! That's the dragon! We've got to follow it! Dragon? Follow it. Let's go, Lump. Lump no likes follow anything that goes. <laughs> Are you coming? Claw things. They're spooky. They're just trees, Lump. Back home, we know has them. The grey forest, dark, foreboding. Grace didn't care. Home, you miss it? Yes, that's why I'm doing this. You miss home, but you leave it. Hmm. You curious human.
to? The dragon stole our fireflies. I promised I'd get them back. Grace couldn't help but smile at Lump's silliness. Suddenly, a strange, sweet scent filled the air. Lump noses that smell. What is it, Lump? Looks like some kind of fruit. A fruit? <laughs> Yum, yum. Lump love fruit. Mmm, that's nice. Like honey from back home. Wait. I can't let myself be distracted. We need to go. Now. But, but the fruit. Okay. Shadows deepened in the ravaged forest. We're getting closer. Um, do we want to be closer? 
Look, Clump. Dragonfire. It's here. Yes, yes. Dragon here. It's K. Now it's K. Okay. Lump trust, Grace. Us chase dragon. Whee! That's the spirit, Lump. We're near. I can feel it. Yes! <laughs> Um, Grace? Human no fly, like lump, yes? A deep rift yawned before them. No, 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 no! We're so close! wasn't meant to happen, but the fruit had an irresistible draw on little Lump. Mmm. No, Lump! Stay here! I need you! Lump's still here. He's just busy! Grace felt her resolve melt. I need to find the dragon. I promised Elder Ava. Just what am I doing out here? All by myself? Silly human. Lump not left is in fruit. <laughs> Thanks, Lump. Grace knew she wouldn't swap that little ball of fire for anything. Wow. You okay, Lump? Little dizzy, but good. What a rush. Amazing. <laughs> we is great team. Starting to tickle. This may be better than fruit. There was no doubt. Something strong and very, very large had been here recently. There it is. Dragon. Grace pursued the beast with little thought for her own safety. You won't get away from me again. I won't let you. Ah! No! Come back! Come back here! Oh, it's okay! It heard you! What? Far above, the dragon circled and dove, falling fast. Run! As the waters calmed, Grace realized the dragon had gone far, far below. No! I... I... 
Her hope was shattered. I can't. It's okay, human. We find Dragon again. Have another go, right? It's okay. Lump, help! But how? Most of the pieces are gone. I can't even fix it. Look! You get on this, okay? I... I don't even know where I'm going anymore. What am I doing? I'm such an idiot. What did I think I was going to do if I caught it? You tried though, human. That's important. Look! One of them's little glowy things you likes. Things too, right? Huh? That's strange. Maybe there are some people around here after all. Forgotten. Much sad. Maybe Dragon? Clumsy, clumsy. You cold, Homan? A little, yes. Lump make fireball. You bring wood. Four pieces, yes? Okay. I can do that. What's up, woman? It's just... I remember collecting wood for Elder Ava. I hope she's still okay. At least I'm doing something useful, I guess. Hmm, this smells like the trees back home. But is it as good as fruits? Is it? Hoven, is it? Where do you come from, Lump? Don't remember. You don't remember anything? Lump just remember anger. Then you, Hoven.
Okay. That should be enough. Okay. Here lump goes. Ancient energy stirred. Reaching into the place beyond. Ah, oh, it feels good to be back. Already? It's only been a few millennia. Is it not wonderful to see light again? To feel sun? <laughs> I was just getting comfortable in the howling void. Who are you two? Ooh, ancient ones. Thought you was a myth. Oh, no, no, my little friend. We are very real. No, we're not. You're imagining us. Go away now. Now we're here, what can we do to help you? Lump! They could help us get to the dragon. Hmm. But nothing is free in this market, or in life. You must provide three offerings to the flame. Should we... If help human, if it make human happy, Lump say do it! Hello. So lovely to see you both. So, what is this place? The market of the lost and the forgotten. Things end up here that have been cast aside or are no longer useful. After a time, so were we. No one came here. No one sought us. I thought we would forget ourselves, but you brought us back. You said you could help. Yes. But to give, we must also receive. I don't have money. Then give a kindness. I'll tell everyone about you. No one will ever forget you again. How kind of you to say. Now I will return the favor. To get your wish, you must submit an offering of hope to the flames. Something dear to your heart. Elder Ava gave me this. The pendant gleamed with hopeful memories. I don't know if I should. It was the last thing that she gave me. A wise person once said that no one ever got anything just by wanting it. Okay. You're right. A crack and a spark and the pendant was gone in the flames. Go away. I said go away. I need help. And? What do you expect me to do about it? Go away. This is a market, right? You have to help me if I give you something. Look, buy help. It's not the kind you need. It isn't? Why? I trade in oblivion. I feast on memories. Oh. But you can still help me. I must find the sacred fireflies and bring them back to my village. Hmm. What memory are you prepared to... Consigned to the flames. I 
I remember Elder Raver's last hug. No, you don't. Don't what? Don't remember. Never mind, never mind. Look, this bit can go on forever. The offering has been made. Um, thank you, I guess? Two offerings down, one to go, and they'll help me follow the dragon under the lake. Ooh, what next? I don't know. Do you think they'd take another memory? The last offering must keep our fire burning. A gesture of hope, of friendship. But it cannot be given by you. And we've already given you something, so we're out. <laughs> what about Lump? You have something to give? Sure. I got Lump. You would give yourself to help your friend? Of course. Lump? You don't have to do this. There must be another way. This is important to human. You freed Lump. You gave Lump memories. Lump want to give you something, too. I don't know what to say. Thank you, Lump. Lump thanks you, too. Thanks, 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 thanks. <laughs> I'll miss you, silly little lump. I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye for us. Hello for you and Dragon. As little lump jumped into the fire, the flames began to burn, larger and brighter. Grace felt a change come over her. Slits opened in her neck. Gills! She could now breathe underwater. The wish has been granted. Time for us to go. Hope you like your gift. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. I'll never forget what you did. I should go to the lake. Follow the dragon, I guess. The loss of Lump weighed heavily upon her. Where once there was light, was now darkness. Where there was noise, only cold silence remained. But she could not let Lump's sacrifice be in vain. She needed to get to the lake and use her newfound powers to pursue the dragon. The lake looked murky, but she had to brave its depths. It's 5 a.m. 
Gran died in the night. Mum got the call a few hours ago. She's still crying. I just feel... Numb. I tried to go back to sleep. But as soon as I close my eyes, the thoughts keep circling back. We should have been there. We drove to the hospital first thing in the morning. No one said much. It seemed to take forever. I've never seen a dead body before. It might be scary. But it's just Gran, right? Maybe I should have stayed at home. When we finally arrived, I wasn't so sure about being there. We went up the stairs to room 305. Grand's room. Mum gently put her hand on my back and asked me if I wanted to wait outside. I said, Yes. Hello again, journal. I'm sitting in the waiting room, just rows of plastic benches in a sea of blue linoleum. And it smells like Ben's bottom cream. A little doodling should distract me from this dreary place. Dad's calling me. Dad had his arm round Mum as they came out of Grand's room. I have never seen her like this.
Mums aren't supposed to cry. They're strong. They're meant to know what to do. Always. I guess losing your own mum makes you feel like a kid again. The drive home was a quiet one again. It's silly, but I keep thinking back to Gran's favourite bars, the one Grandad gave her. I was running in the house, even though Gran had told me not to. I still remember the noise of the bars smashing into little pieces. Gran was there in an instant. I waited for her to shout. She didn't. She just looked sad. And somehow, that was worse. Gran wouldn't let me pick up the pieces. She found every single one. And carried them into the kitchen. Later, I snuck in with a tube of glue in hand. saw the vase. She put it in the cupboard. Later I found it again. When I asked her why she'd binned the vase, she smiled again. Gran always says, fault. I shouldn't have run in the house. Now everything is broken. If I'd started my story sooner, Gran could have read it. It might have helped. I could... I could have fixed... I would have fixed her heart. I don't even know how to fix my story. It's a mess. 
I left Grace to sink into cold, dark waters. She's completely alone. She left behind Lump, her only friend. Okay, focus, Izzy. How can I continue the story? How would she feel about this situation? Grace felt... Guilty. We're getting somewhere. No. The merchants had been true to their offer. Still, the water closing over her felt like death. Cold and terrifying. I can breathe! This feels so... strange. Wish Lump could have been here. Ugh! I shouldn't have let her do that! But there that. was no time to dwell on her lost friend. Grace had a dragon to find. Which way did it go? This one. All right. Another branching tunnel. The walls were closing in. Down here, I guess. Far too narrow for winged beasts. Did I guess wrong? A dead end. I knew it! Wrong tunnel! No. There must be a way. Think, Grace, think! <sighs> How do I get up there? let Lump go. She needed to decide her own path, alone. The submerged tunnels flared outwards, a tangled mess of caverns and hollows, twisting and turning. Bending with almost malicious intent.
breathe, Grace, breathe. I've got to find the dragon. Get back the fireflies. Do this, Grace. No! Gah! Something's got me! Can't get control! She found herself amidst a great coral bed, shimmering with color and life. Wow! No! I have no matter what. Beautiful, and now... Broken. It grows back, right? Dragon to find. I have to focus on that. No matter what. She spoke those words. But deep in her heart, a seed of chilling doubt took root. gave way to darkness, endless and all-consuming. It's cold here, robbed of sight, the pressure of the deep sea on her chest. Her thoughts had only one way to go, inwards. What am I doing? I let Lump sacrifice herself for me. And for what? I don't even know where the dragon is, or where I am. I'm falling. I'm failing. Eldereva. The village. Lump. All of them. Huh? What? I need to find the dragon, no matter what.
cold determination gripped her. Numbing all other thoughts. Press forward. Get to the dragon. No matter what. There was just the way forward, barred by an indestructible metal door. No! I need to... need to... find... the dragon. Grace could no longer ignore the seed of doubt. It seeped into her heart, as cold as the water she'd come from. I have... no. I need to find... it. The dragon. No matter what... No matter what. The Seekin seemed... friendly. Hey! Have you seen the dragon? Wait! A host of them greeted her with curious chatter, warm and welcoming. Have you seen the dragon? Please. No. But Grace had no time for this. Let me through. The words felt hollow and meaningless. Freezing cold blanketed Grace. There was comfort in its numbing embrace. She wished she could stay. Did I do this? She did this. Is this my fault? It was her fault. The home. I... I destroyed it. A seekin, encased in ice. Oh no! What have I done? I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I never wanted this. I didn't know. I should never have come. What 
would Elder Ava think of me? I'm so selfish! Guilt dogged her every step. Did you make me do this? It would not rest. Guilt dogged her every step. would not leave her. It would not cease. Leave me alone! The creature looked at her, as if it could see into her very soul. Under its stare, her fears crystallized like ice. She knew that she would... disappear. You will make me disappear into nothingness. I can't let that happen. Would Grace embrace her guilt? Or run from it? You win. I can't run anymore. Do what you will. Hello, journal. Dear Journal. Hi, Journal. I've... Today... <laughs> Hello, stranger. I've been thinking a lot about... My dream is to become a writer. Yeah, right! A writer who can't even write. Okay. Find something simple to start with. What did I do today? Today I got up. I had breakfast. I tried watching the telly. That's it. I'm going back to bed. Hi, journal. Another day.
each time I wake up, for the tiniest of moments. It... isn't... true. But then it all comes rushing back. It... is... true. Looking around my room, everything reminds me of Gran. Her puzzle box gift from last year. The magic tank we made during the holiday. Our yogurt pot robot. These paints Gran gave me. This pen. Even you, Jano. that I come down and have some. It tasted like nothing. Everything does. Mum said we need to send out invitations to the funeral. How can she think about that? She's ready to shove Gran into a box like a pet goldfish! Then I stormed off into my room! Dad came up for some well-meant dad talk. I know you're sad, but it will get better. You'll see. Just give it time. I know he wanted to cheer me up, but he's wrong. feels very dark now. Gran has a proverb for times like these. Gran always says... Always darkest before the dawn. No, that's not right. I 
keep thinking about all the things Gran won't get to see. When I go to university, she won't be there. When I get my first job, she won't be there. If I get married, she won't be there. Even if that's unlikely because... Boys. I prefer cats. Missing Gran already feels so bad. But how could I want that feeling to go away? How could I be fine with Gran being gone? I'm going to have to feel like this forever. Thanks, Pinky. I can't stop crying. Pinky is probably getting fed up with being used as a tissue. But she never leaves my side. I think that means, get back to writing your story. Pinky's got a point. I should at least try to write. I can't leave Grace like that. Where am I? A grey void surrounded her, swallowing sound and hope. Hello? Grace guessed that if she kept moving, then surely a solution would present itself. Is someone here? Anyone? In the emptiness around her, she found... A hut? A palace? Hope? I... I don't know what comes next. It's so cold here. So empty. Just... Nothingness. I... Can't find... Can't find the words. I'm never going to find the dragon. Or the firefly. They won't come. The words just won't come anymore. I don't know where I am, how to get out, or even where I'm going. Pointless. What kind of writer can't find the words? I messed everything up. Let's try this again. Grace awoke under an old tree, in an unfamiliar land. I don't know if I can do this anymore. She walked boldly ahead, a spring in her step. I'm so tired. Grace knew she just had to keep going. What's the point? Put one foot in front of the other. I've failed. It's over. Whilst she still had breath left in her body, there was still hope. This is 
all my, my fault. fault. I, sh I should just, just stop. stop. I'm right here. Always was, always will be. I don't understand. And I don't care. You don't? No. Just leave. I'm meant to be alone. Forever alone and useless. You know I'm right below you. I'm not good company right now. You don't need to be. Why don't you tell me how you came to be here? I... It sounds silly when I say it now. I lost a dragon. And now... I just don't know what to do next. But at some point you knew, right? You had purpose, hope. Yes. I knew exactly what I needed to do. I had to stop the dragon. Return the fireflies. Save the village. And you couldn't do those things? I tried. But I just ended up doing everything wrong. Everything? Are you sure about that? Well... Think back. Okay. Maybe not everything. Go on. I didn't deliberately freeze everyone in the Undersea Kingdom. Well then, that's something. I like listening to you. Would you continue? You do? Oh. Well, okay. It's just... I'm just so confused right now. What were you trying to do before you got here? I was trying to find a dragon. It destroyed everything I loved. I need to get the fireflies back. They'll restore my village. But I just don't know what I'm doing anymore. What did you do last time? Last time I what? Found a dragon. What? I've never found one before. 
Then how can you expect to know exactly what to do? I guess I can't. But I want to. No one ever got anything just by wanting it. You've got to try. You've got to fail sometimes. I wish I had your confidence. to ask you. Go on. It's... it's difficult. I'll wait. I don't know where I am. Or even who I am. I'm lost. Could you help me become a little, uh, unlost? I don't think that is a word. That's not entirely helpful. You seem to think that it's wrong to be lost. Well, isn't it? Everyone feels a little lost sometimes, even me. You do? Really? I don't mind it, actually. Do you? Well... Yes. I usually know what to do, and where to go. So, if someone else were lost, what would you tell them to do? Hmm. I tell them not to give up and find help. How about taking your own advice? I guess it's easier to give advice than take it. Could you get me someplace else? Let me see if I can help you out there. Patience. I want to know one more thing. You sound a lot better. I do? I guess I feel better. Well then, time to set course. It's nice of you to listen to me. Any time. So, anything else? I don't have the strength to go on. That's okay. It's not. People are relying on me. But you're still human. You still tire. We all do. I guess I hoped it wouldn't take this long. I'm tired. Tired of trying. Tired of failing. Tired of everything. You need a rest. But I can't! I don't have time! Why? My village is depending on me to get the fireflies back. That sounds like quite a tiring thing to do. Well... Yes. <sighs> Want to take a rest together? That sounds...
This is where I leave. But... I... You're not alone. You are loved. Be kind to yourself. Journal. The funeral was today. Mum and Dad dressed all in black. They even brought a black romper for Ben. I didn't want to wear black. Ground thought black was depressing. That life was dark enough already. Gran always used to say Colors are the music of nature. I'm starting to see what she meant. So I went to open my wardrobe. was. I hadn't worn it for years. I remember Gran saying it was... Cheery. The funeral was outside. In the memorial garden. The sun was shining. The birds were singing. It was like they didn't know. The vicar had just started talking when Uncle Alan stepped into the fish pond. I couldn't help but imagine Cran caring more about the fish than Uncle Alan. The picture stuck in my head. Cran running to the drenched Uncle Alan, grumbling at him for frightening the fish. It was too much. The laughter bubbled up inside me. Dad tried to look annoyed. <laughs> After the vicar finally finished droning on, we started the singing. All things bright and beauty. Full.
<laughs> ben started wailing. No, howling. Dad took him out. Well played, Ben. Laughing felt much better than crying. The wake was at our place. There were so many people. I didn't know most of them. Everyone said how sorry they were. How Gran was. Such a wonderful lady. I wish she could have heard them. Everyone had a story about Gran. Like the time she hit a bully with her pencil box. Or when she saved a toad that had hurt its leg. Or how she decorated Mum's room like an underwater kingdom, so she could feel like a mermaid. That's so like her. One old lady told me how they used to bunk off work and go to the Glastonbury Music Festival. Another of her friends said Gran once got arrested while protesting wailing. I expected this day to be terrible, Journal. And it was, but I didn't expect to smile or laugh, to be surprised, to feel happy that people loved Gran like I did. Each time I heard a story about Gran, I could imagine her laughing along with it. It was like she was there with me, helping me through it. I still feel in peace as journal. Maybe there's a part of me that will always be sad. that will always miss her. But maybe that's okay. And that's the way it should be. I don't know what happens after we die. But I think I know where we go. Into all the people who have ever cared about us. 
we make a sort of place for them in our hearts. I need to finish Grace's story. Gran would want me to. I want me to. I think I know what to do now. Let's summarize. After the dragon attacked her village, the kind Grace set out to return the fireflies. On her travels, she met a grumpy djinn guarding a fallen city of warriors and found a lonely fire creature named Lump. They became friends, but then Lump was forced to stay behind with the Ancient Ones in exchange for the gift of water breathing. Deep under the water, inside the lost Seekin Palace, chased by the shadow of remorse, Grace had her big moment of doubt. But she pulled through it all. And now, she is ready. myself. I know you'll always be there. Maybe that's okay. You're part of this adventure. Part of me. Thank you. Now. I will return the fireflies. With her confidence renewed, a newfound power coursed through her. Forward! 
She felt that she could touch the sky. A tall tower loomed overhead. Many moons had shone above since first it was built. Another obstacle? Ha! What I've been through, you really think that will stop me? A lone figure stood, unbowed, defiant. It drew her to it. Her foe rose before her. No breath in its body, but no less terrifying.
nothing's moving. Must be more to do. A gust of fresh air rewarded Grace's efforts. As she rose up the stairs, Grace knew a good idea. It was a great idea! darkened around Grace. She had reached the Dragon's Mountain. For the first time, Grace felt no fear. She knew she had all she needed. Before her, a molten sea stretched into the distance. It did not slow her down. I laugh in the face of lava.
Suddenly, Grace no longer felt the heat. In its stead, a cold dread crept up her spine. like my village but it can't be it's a trick it has to be an eerily familiar sight awaited her that's my house how elder Ava no wait come back oh no 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 Only emptiness remained. Her thoughts raced ahead of her. it be real she gripped the chain with furious determination. I know you're there! Roar all you like! It won't stop me! between rage and regret. Grace pushed ever upwards.
But even through adversity within and without, her determination shone bright. She had grown. Almost there. Chilling winds shook her to the bone. Still she climbed. And let's finish this. Glad we're on the same page. Every stride pushing against. Storm. And snow. Defiant, unwavering. One step after the other. That's bow. That's where I last saw. I felt terrible. I never should have let you stay behind. Lump, see how far you come. You grown big. Lump did right thing. Don't go. Have to, Grace. But we'll always be there in the memory. I'll make sure to keep you there. Goodbye, little lump.
slow dragon. Here I come. Finally. Grace readied herself for a confrontation. Right. This is it. Uh, hello. Bit of an anticlimax. When she first set out, Grace wanted to return the sacred fireflies to their rightful home. But now she realized that, regardless of how her adventure ended, the journey had forever changed her. Standing there, she felt... Battle ready. She had the fortitude to face whatever battles lay ahead. The words were at her command. She was powerful. She was ready. Come out! I am ready to face you in combat. I really don't think you are. Why did you scare away all our sacred fireflies? Why? They were in my way. They're with me now, and I won't let you harm them. You cannot win this battle. Be gone! Just make me disappear. I am the Unmaker, the Ender of World. Not this one. All things must come to an end. Your friends, your family, you. In time, even dragons fade. Ponder this. Elsewhere. Not if I can help it. One person can make a difference. I know that now. You have been reading the wrong stories, little one. Sometimes things just... end. If you want to end this world, you're going to have to go through me. Yes. That's what I've been trying to do. You've never met Resistance before, have you? You can't hurt me, and I can't hurt you. And what is your solution, little one? I'm not sure. Ma Very well. You may ask me one question. Make this one count, Grace. Astoria. It's already dying, isn't it? 
It is fading into the void. It is burning into nothingness. Why? Why is this happening? It is time. No more, no less. Can it be stopped? No. It is inevitable. The wheel turns. The cycle continues. You have had your one question. I have work to do. Please! I've overcome so much to get here. I've had to face what I am. And it was a struggle. And I... I think it always will be. I envy your fight. It can be yours too! <clears throat> you can change things! No! What? What? I did not aim for you. Some things are not to be changed. Not to be seen. I can't. You can. You will. Learn to dream. What happened? It's all gone, I'm afraid. It can't be just gone. Why couldn't I do anything? Why couldn't I save it? There was everything has a time to go. Even worlds. But I don't want that. I feel like a failure. <laughs> That's silly. You didn't fail because you couldn't win. I couldn't. The. I even started. You recovered the fireflies. Eight. Between you, them, and your book, <laughs> you'll work it out. Astoria was gone, but the fireflies still remained, waiting for a new beginning. You're... you're rebuilding the world, aren't you? And you're starting with my memories. A 
fruitful work. A remembrance of home. That's it. No more fireflies left. There's still something missing. Hey! You're still here. Can you help? Firefly. Now you're ready for a new story. And I have to say goodbye too. Thank you, Firefly. I never thought I'd see you again. But you're not really here, are you? You... You didn't make it. You knew, didn't you? That you wouldn't? That's why the Firefly came to me. They knew too. So, these are my memories of you. That's where you live now, isn't it? Within me. I'll hold you close. I'll take you with me. Let's see what adventures lie ahead. Hello, Journal. Reading these dusty pages makes me feel old. I reread them so many times as a kid, taking myself back to those dark moments, reassuring myself it would all be okay. That helped. You helped. I still miss Gran every day. Sometimes I hear her laugh in the back of my mind. Abby reminds me of her. Insatiably curious and fiercely independent. I hope she never loses that. Mom's coming to live with us for a bit. I hope her and Abby are going to make some memories of their own. They're already both obsessed with cat videos and Instasnap. Abby's birthday is coming up. Maybe I'll get her a journal of her own. She says she wants to be a writer. <laughs> 